Welcome back to Fireside Chats with Gaslight. Today we have the amazing Tim. Hello, Tim. How's it going? Hi, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Good, thank you. Thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. Let's get right into it. Tim, how did you become a developer? Um, there's kind of a long answer to that question, but maybe the short version is, as a kid, I was always around computers. My parents bought one when I was very young. And I actually, while they were at work, would stay at home. And we lived with my grandparents at the time. And my grandmother had no idea how to use computers, but I just wanted to play games. Mm -hmm. And so I would play these games and I had no idea how to turn the computer off. And I was afraid that if I turned it off, I would break it. And so I learned how to use the computer because I was terrified of breaking it. <laughs> and I had these nightmares where like Mario was inside the computer with a big mallet, like breaking stuff on the inside because I pressed the wrong key that was like a self-destruct button or something. So that was like the very first introduction into computers. But then later on, I sort of just fell into it. Like when I applied for college, um, I thought, you know what, I'm kind of good at this stuff. And so I guess I'll just get better at it. And I applied to computer science to Ohio State and University of Cincinnati. And I never looked back. I just went with the CS program at UC. It was hard, but I was stubborn, and that's why. Yeah. Yeah, you are. We appreciate that about you. <laughs> you appreciate my stubbornness? <laughs> yes, of course. Oh, uh, okay. Without well, it works for and against me. <laughs> uh, okay, so you've been doing it for a little while maybe then. Mm -hmm. How did you end up at Gaslight? Um, I ended up at Gaslight indirectly so i think the first time that i really met somebody from gaslight was at qc merge 2013 which was also the last time that it was put on um <laughs> matt brewer introduced me to doug and it, the rest is kind of history but I, the thing that i remember the most is that doug was giving a talk on velocity and he had a big pinocchio slide where he was talking about velocity is a lie and um, I remember that stuck with me pretty well but beforehand I met him and then right before he was getting up to speak I gave him a message that just said hey man you know good luck on your talk and he told me something about himself he said I'm nervous about this I hope it goes well and nothing about the conversation that I had with Doug gave me any indication at all that he was nervous about it. And so I thought that was really strange and started to connect the dots that maybe people at Gaslight are actually humans and not like perfect. Mm. Um, but that was like a good year or two before I actually joined. The way that I ended up going from there, uh, I went from QC Merge and getting an introduction to the cool people at Gaslight and the neat things that were happening. And then into that, I went to the Gaslight Friday Coffees for it felt like maybe a year and we talked philosophy we talked <laughs> computers we talked camping and we talked thread injecting with um with hammocks and and all kinds of crazy stuff like basically nothing was off limits at gaslight coffee yeah. and i learned a lot about people who work there just from going to that um and then fast forward a little bit more and there was like a tweet that went out that a project was starting and they needed two developers and uh, I was just at the right point to have heard that. I didn't think that I had a shot at it, but I went for it anyway. And a couple of interviews later, I was I was a Gaslight employee. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, it's always one of those weird things where it's like you have to be see things right at the exact time, intersect things, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. So it how is, long? Yeah, it was a, it was interesting. I mean, that was like three, maybe about three years in the making that I'd heard yeah. of Gaslight, then actually met people from the company, then went to like a year or more maybe of coffees, and then I was ready and Gaslight was ready and it just converged. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And shout out to Gaslight Coffee and it's still going on now, so people should join us. Still having the same kind of, uh, yeah. same kind of conversations, the same, uh, it, it's just a really good way to like unwind at the, at the end of the week and yes. have an opportunity to talk about whatever's on your mind. Definitely. So how long have you been with Gaslight then? Uh, it's going on six years, I think. Oh, snap. 
yeah, I can't count, but it's like five or six. I'm pretty sure it's okay. six. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like <laughs> coming up in October. All right. Yep. Um, so six years is a while. What is your favorite part about Gaslight, other than Gaslight Coffee? Other than Gaslight Coffee? Mm-hmm. Um, there's a surface answer, and then there's an answer just slightly below it. And the easy answer is people, the, the people at Gaslight. Um, I have not ever worked with a group of people who are more competent and dedicated and caring as this. Um, I've had pockets of that within other companies that I've worked, but like as a permeating culture, just the the caring professionalism of everybody and the desire to really solve hard problems, not just coast, not just get onto something and like be a part of a team for years and not really get any real progress and care about the outcomes. Everybody that I've worked with is on projects, wants to talk to customers, wants to understand feedback from, from them and whoever's using the software we build and wants to deliver actual working software to a production environment. It's, it's kind of, maybe it's a testament against <laughs> the software industry, how many people there are that are in it that don't actually necessarily care about the end result of the work that they do. They mm-hmm. find themselves as like a comfortable cog in the system. Um, and I think that, if you kind of looked at any individual at Gaslight, you're going to find the opposite of a comfortable cog. You're going to find somebody who is striving to deliver something of value and stand out and be be helpful and, and see the work that we do change the world. Yeah, I like that. That's a good one. And I agree. Thanks, Tim. That's awesome. And thanks for joining us today. I bet everybody appreciates your awesome voice and your awesome words of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> thank you katie i appreciate it well everybody thanks for joining us again this week until next time we are out <laughs>